Oh, good morning, Hedda. Good morning. Good morning, dear Miss Tesman. What an early out call. So kind of you. And has the young bride slept well in her new home? Oh, thank you. Yes, possibly well. Possibly. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good. When I got up this morning, you were sleeping like a top. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, yes. One has to accustom oneself to anything new, Miss Tesman. It takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, but won't you sit down? Oh, no, thank you, Hedda. I just came to see if you had everything you needed. I must see about getting home. My poor sister will be waiting for me. Now, be sure to give her my love, won't you? And uh, tell her that I'll run over and see her later today. Oh, yes, I'll tell her that. <gasps> George, I almost forgot. I've brought something for you. What's that, Auntie Juju? What? Well, open it and see, dear boy. Oh, good heavens, Auntie Juju. You've kept them. Oh. Hedda, this is really very touching. What, what is it, Tesman? It's my old slippers. Oh, them. I remember you kept on talking about them on our honeymoon. Yes, I missed them dreadfully. Here, now, here, Hedda, do, do look. Fancy Aunt Irina's embroidered them for me, despite mm. her being so over. Oh, you can't imagine what memories they have for me. Not for me. No, Hedda's right there, George. Oh, well, I, I thought since she's one of the family now. Tesman, we really can't go on keeping this maid. Not keep Bertha. What makes you say that, dear? What? Well, look at that. She's left her old hat lying on the chair. Oh, but Hedda... Well, suppose someone came in and saw it. Hedda, that's Auntie Juju's hat. <gasps> Indeed, it's mine. But it doesn't happen to be old, Hedda, dear. I didn't look at it very closely, Mr. Tesman. As a matter of fact, this is the very first time I've worn it, as the good Lord is my witness. It's very pretty and, and really smart. Oh, I'm afraid it's nothing very much, really. My parasol... Oh, here it is. But well, that's mine, too, not Bertha's. New hat and a new parasol, Hedda. Fancy that. Very pretty and charming. Yes, isn't it? But, Auntie Juju, you take a good look at Hedda before you go. Isn't she pretty and charming? Well, there's nothing new in that, dear boy. Hedda has been a beauty ever since the day she was born. Yes, but if you noticed how strong and healthy she's looking and how she's filled out since we went away. Filled out? Yes. You can't see it so clearly with that dress on, but I have reason to know. I am exactly the same as when I went away. It must be the mountain air up there in the Tyrol. She's beautiful, beautiful. Hedda is beautiful. God bless you and keep you, Hedda Tesman, for George's sake. Oh, let me go, please. I shall come and see you both every day. Oh, yes, please, Auntie Jude, you do. What? Goodbye. Goodbye, George, dear. Goodbye, dear, dear, Auntie Jude. I must get back and tell Auntie Rena all about it. Do that and tell her that I will be able to see her this morning. And if you're not able to see her this morning... <laughs> It's so golden and withered. Well, we're in September now. Yes. <laughs> we're already in September. Auntie Juju was uh, behaving rather oddly, I thought, didn't she? Almost as though she was in church or something. <laughs> Wonder what came over her. Have you any idea? I hardly know her. Does she often act like that? Well, not to the extent she did today. Do you think she was hurt by what I said about the hat? Oh, no, I don't think so. Well, uh, at first a little, perhaps. But what a thing to do. Throw her hat down in someone's drawing room. People don't do such things. Well, I, I'm sure Auntie Juju doesn't do it very often. Oh, well, I'll make it up with her. Oh, Hedda, would you? Mm. When you see them this afternoon, invite her to come out here this evening. Hey, you bet I would. There's another thing you could do which would please her enormously. Oh? If you could bring yourself to call her Auntie Juju, for my sake, please. What? Oh, no, really, Tesman, you mustn't ask me to do anything like that. I've told you so once before. I'll try to call her Aunt Juliana. That's as far as I'll go. I said, Hedda, is anything wrong? What? I'm just looking at my old piano. It doesn't really go with all this. As soon as I get my salary, we'll see about changing it. No, no. Don't let's change it. I don't want to part with it. We can move it into that little room and get another one to put in here. Yes, we might do that. <laughs> These flowers weren't here when we arrived last night. I expect Auntie Juju brought them. Here's a card. We'll come back later today. Guess who it's from? Mm. No idea. Who? What? It says Mrs. Elfstead. Oh, really? Mrs. Elfstead? 
Uh, she used to be Miss Reesing, didn't she? Yes. She was the one with that irritating hair. She was always showing off. I guess she used to be an old flame of yours. Oh, that didn't last long. Anyway, that was before I got to know you, Hedda. <laughs> Can't you fancy her being in town? But... Strange, you should call her. Hedda? I only knew her at school. I haven't seen her for... Oh, heaven knows how long. I don't know how she manages to stick it out up there in the north. Tell me, Tasman. Doesn't he live somewhere up in those parts? You know, Islet Lovborg. Yes, that's right. So he does. Here again, madam. The lady who came and left the flowers, the ones you're holding. Oh, is she? Well, we'll show her in. <laughs> My dear Mrs. Elfstead, good morning. How delightful to see you again after all this time. Yes, it's many years since we met. And since we met, what? Thank you for your lovely flowers. I wanted to come yesterday afternoon, but they told me you were away. You've only just arrived in town, then, huh? I got here yesterday, around midday. Oh, I became almost desperate when I heard you weren't here. Desperate? Why? But, my dear Mrs. Reesing, uh, Elstead... There's nothing wrong, I hope. Yes. Yes, there is. And I don't know anyone else here whom I can turn to. Well. Come and sit with me on the sofa. Oh, I feel too restless to sit down. Oh, well, come along now. Now, tell us, Mrs. El... Uh, we... uh, Has something happened at home? Yes. That is yes and no. Oh, I do hope you won't misunderstand oh. me. Then you'd better tell us the whole story, Mrs. Elstead. That's why you've come? What? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, then, in case you don't already know, Islet Loveborg is in town. Loveborg here? Islet back in town? Fancy, Hedda, did you hear that? Yes, of course I heard. He's been here a week, a whole week, alone in this city, with all those dreadful people. But my dear Mrs. Elfstead, what concern is he of yours? He's been tutoring the children. Your children? My husband's. I have none. Oh, you mean your stepchildren? Yes. Well, was he sufficiently, um... I don't know how to put it, uh, sufficiently re reliable in his habits to be suited to such a post, what? For the past two to three years, he has been living irreproachably. You don't say. How did you hear that? I hear. Quite irreproachably, I assure you, in every respect. All the same, alone in this city with money in his pockets, uh, I'm so dreadfully frightened something may happen to him. Well, why didn't he stay up there with you and your husband? Well, once his book had come out, he became restless. Oh, yes. Auntie Judy says he's brought out a new book. Yes, a big new book about the history of civilization. A kind of general survey. It came out a fortnight ago. Everyone's been buying it and reading it. It's created a tremendous stir. Is it really? Must be something he's dug up then. You mean from the old days? Yes. Oh, no, he's written it all since he came to live with us. Well, that's splendid news. Had a fancy that. Yes, if only he can go on like this. Have you seen him since you've been down here? No, not yet. I had such dreadful difficulty finding his address. But this morning, I managed to track him down at last. I must say, I find it a little strange that your husband... My husband? Mm. What do you mean? Well, that he should send you all the way down here on an errand of this kind. I'm surprised he didn't come himself to keep an eye on his friend. Oh, no, my, my husband hasn't the time. Besides, I, I wanted to do some shopping here. Ah. Well, that's different. Please, Mr. Tesman, be kind to Islet Loveborg if he comes here. Well, I'm sure he will. I mean, you used to be such good friends in the old days. And you're both studying the same subject, as far as I can understand. You're in the same field, aren't you? Well, we used to be, yes, anyway. Yes, yes, so I, I do beg you earnestly, do please, please keep an eye on him. Oh, Mr. Tesman, do promise me you will. I shall do everything for Islet that lies in my power, Mrs. Reesing. Elstead. You can depend on that. Oh, how good and kind you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My husband's so fond of him, you see. You'd better send him a note, Tesman. He may not come to you of his own accord. Yes, that'll probably be the best plan, eh? What? The sooner the better. Why not do it now? Oh, yes, if only you would. Yes, I'll do it this very moment. Uh, do you have his address, Mrs. Oh. Elfstead? Yes. Good. Um, well, I'll go in there right now and... Uh, where are my slippers? Hmm? <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Try to 
must, Aunt Friendly. Make it a nice long letter. Hmm? Yes, all right. Oh, please don't say anything about my having seen you. Oh, good heavens. No, of course not. 